Oh my gosh! Holy! Okay, that's a first for me. Oh my goodness. I don't have to typhon like that, guys. That was a ridiculous hit. Lights out. Subscribe, thumbs up. Peace. Hey crew, welcome or welcome back. Honestly, those are the fastest I've hit those ramps and I feel like this, this upgrade really made a big difference in, in, in allowing me to hit those ramps if they're doing full sends. Because uh, I have been having a hard time in loose dry gravel to hit <clears throat> those, the ramp at that speed. So today's video is basically a, um, a part two to the video I made about a month ago trying to get rid of steering slop in three S Arma cars. These parts here are basically what's left over from that video. So my left hand is what the pivot ball, they're metal pivot balls, um, what they look like. And in my right hand, you'll see the, see my left hand, it's got a flange basically on each side or a little bit of a lip. What I've done is I've ground them down and, and, the, and the after is what's in my right hand there. So basically, um, I don't really show how I ground them down, I use a Dremel tool. <clears throat> So today what we're going to use was for our tools, we need a 2 mil hex, this is just a bit, but also a driver would be good, a hand driver, and also a 2.5 mil hex, a bit, and a hand driver will be helpful. And as for materials, or uh, we have the Techno TKR1226 shims, and I use seven of them, and you get a 10 pack, and I use seven of them in one uh, install. So basically we start off by removing the receiver box. And what's cool with arm is done is they put a little dot by these screws. So there's four of them, plus the, uh, the screw to the, uh, the drag link of your servo. There it is there. So five screws, remove them. And basically once you uh, unplug your motor, that will just fall out. So this is the drag link on your, on your servo saver, guys. So I pulled out the uh, plastic pivot balls and this is where I install the metal pivot balls that I've uh, altered from the, uh, the, what I just showed you a few moments ago. You might get lucky and just push them in by hand or you might need a little persuasion with a set of pliers. So the video doesn't show so, so well, but I actually have a shim on the top and the bottom of that pivot ball. Um, you can see a little glistening there. Uh, for some reason that footage didn't come in so well, but I like to tighten that up a bit and I feel like that does help out uh, getting, we're just trying to get rid of some slop, try to cover all, cover all angles here. So uh, I'm just flopping that around and ensure that it's not binding. You're gonna hear that word plenty today, the word binding. Um, so let's, what I do is I basically take that whole bell crank cover right off. So I'm just very quickly showing you what I'm, uh, there's ensure there's no binding, freely moving. This is what we wanna see throughout the whole installation. This is critical. Yeah, I get rid of the bottom of the shocks. I leave the tops. If you just, uh, if you need to pause, do so. I know it's quick, but I just want, you know, this is kind of information a lot of people know, but if you don't, just pause as you need be. On the bottom side, there's five long screws and one little fella. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Five long ones and one small one. And essentially that whole cover, that whole assembly will come off as a unit. I prefer doing it this way. I find it's easiest. You're not losing parts, etc. And we will do so quick right about now. So I just grab a flat driver or something and just pry up. There's just two tabs that need to come out of the bottom of the chassis there. And that whole unit will come off. And I find it's just the easiest way to expose the whole thing. Just get it all out of the way. Um, that way you can just do your your task and not mess with any parts in the way. There we go, that's the whole unit. So here's the bell crank, here's the whole assembly here. Basically just pull it off and I'll just show you what I've done. I've done a lot of trial and error guys on this installation. Um, and I know the, the shims are tiny, but you add too many and you will have binding and uh, parts that just don't wanna move freely. So I'm just cleaning off the post. There's some rust there running into the water and the snow. So here's the, the install of the first shim. So I put one on the bottom of each steering post here. 
And then I just grease up, grease up the post a little bit. Use whatever you're using. I like red and tacky. And here is the bell crank assembly. Again, showing, this is hand tight. I'm just showing you that they're hand tight, like very tight, and there still isn't any binding. They're moving freely and flopping around. That's what you wanna see all the time. The binding would obviously uh, affect your steering. Um, it's probably a good time to say, if you have a version two 3S, you're gonna wanna, and you have bushings instead of bearings, now's a good time to upgrade to bearings, but the version three comes with the bearings already. So I added one shim here. I only put one on each side. Um, and I'm showing you there's no binding and then also on this side again. I just add one I did try I know you're asking I did try two shims on each and Once I hand tighten them crank them tight they bound they stuck so there's a little lip there So that one shim just seems to be perfect uh, Again, these are my findings guys, and I'm happy with the outcome uh, and I, some guys on the uh, Facebook groups that I'm part of or Arma forums, they're using different combinations. But for me, I was happy with this outcome. And honestly, I've tried about four or five different combinations. That's about it for uh, that portion. So put the uh, bell crank back in, ensure that it's moving freely and uh, put your diff back in. And again, so now there's one more shim to be installed. So it's on my left, I'm showing you here. So if you will, the uh, passenger side of the RC car. I did try both posts and I feel like because that screw is so close to the, uh, the right side, um, it, it, it did just that, it bound. And I found that if you have your contorted, you'll actually rub on the drive shaft once you install it. That's it, we're putting this car back together. I'm gonna show you quickly. So, the key point here is just to put get those two tabs started first. Now this whole thing will kind of flop onto the top of the car. Oh, no binding, beautiful. So uh, I grab the whole, I see I grab the bell crank cover. It's all in place. Now at this point, I'll put in the screws from the bottom side. I always start with the little one. I feel like that was designed just to hold that cover in place and the long ones are basically the integrity of the uh, install here of the bell crank. So I don't crank them tight, because if you do with an impact, the comments will flare and people will say, don't crank them too tight. So yeah, I, I always finish them off by hand, truthfully. So we'll get these on there. I just slow it down just a little bit, just to actually show, um, this is a key point here. Crank them down by hand, and yeah, the screw underneath this one—it fell on the ground, and I didn't want to—I didn't want to pick it up. So I do get to it after the fact. I notice it's still missing here. This is it. We're gonna reattach our turnbuckles, reattach our shocks in a really quick fashion here, and um, we are nearing the end. So now, but not quite. So now I like to show. Uh, I hook up a battery, a charge battery. Oh yeah, we have to put the receiver box back in, obviously. So uh, center your servo saver and ensure that drag link from your servo saver is under the link of the car. That's how that wants to function there. And again, I just grab the receiver box as I flip it over. I'm holding it with my left hand and uh, you can attach or screw in those five screws as you've taken out earlier. Those are the countersunk ones. The four countersunk and one for the uh, servo saver. This part's a little tedious. I just kind of put it on its back and try to line it up. No binding. Beautiful. Hey, when you get to this point, guys, you're going to want to try plug in a battery and try uh, on blocks and, and off the blocks. That way you add the resistance and the weight of the tires and et cetera, and ensure there's no binding. You don't see that drive shaft moving. And that is the install, guys. Thanks so much. Subscribe, like, comment. Peace.